Thank you everyone for joining us today. Now we're gonna hear a few words from the president and CEO of the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce, Jack Lavin. Good afternoon. This is Jack Lavin, president and CEO of the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining this afternoon's COVID-19 webinar update. We are very grateful that Aaron Guthrie, director of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity has taken the time out of her busy schedule to be with us this afternoon. During these unprecedented times, we at the Chicagoland Chamber understand how important it is for the business community and the public sector to work together. To that end, we are advocating at City Hall and the state of Illinois, and we are in constant communication with our congressional delegation to ensure that our region's employers receive the financial resources and regulatory relief that they need today and in the weeks and months ahead. The chamber is here for you. Let us know what your current priorities are so we can be your champion and partner. And feel free to email me at any time if you have questions or issues uh, that you need the chamber's help with. My email is jlavin at chicagolandchamber.org. We are delighted this afternoon to have DCO Director Aaron Guthrie with us. This agency is the state's economic development arm and provides opportunities, support, and assistance to business and entrepreneurs across Illinois. Before being appointed by Governor Pritzker, Director Guthrie served as Regional General Manager for Uber Midwest here in Chicago and was at McKinsey and Company prior to that. And I'd like to take this moment to extend the business community's great appreciation to Aaron and Governor Pritzker for their leadership, particularly for their decisive efforts in securing a statewide economic injury declaration from the SBA, which among other things, unlocks low interest loans for businesses. Aaron and the governor worked very hard in gathering that information and getting that application in. And so they've been there, been champions of our business community to make sure all the resources that we can have available are available. Today, Aaron will provide an update on DCEO's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll also have a few minutes at the end to take some audience questions. For those of you who are joining via Zoom, you can submit a question in writing at any point during the webinar using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We will get to as many questions as possible. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website, chicagolandchamber.org later today. And now it's my pleasure to pass things off to the director of DCEO, Aaron Guthrie. Aaron, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jack, and thank you to everyone here today who took the time to have this conversation. Um, I, I want to start by saying, you know, this is a very uncertain time and the governor and I and the rest of his cabinet are really committed to listening, to hearing what's going on. Um, Jack, you have been instrumental in helping identify the needs of the business community. Um, so thank you for that and to your team. Um, and I just want to continue to reiterate that we're here to listen and help however we can, um, whether that's advocating for you, whether that's uh, rolling out programs, or just, you know, purely listening to your ideas. So once again, thank you for having me. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the programs that DCEO is ma managing. Um, I will also touch a little bit on what we know about the federal stimulus bill, which is quite limited, but uh, we'll plan to, to hit on those points. So let's dive right in. We'll go to the next slide. So this week, Governor Pritzker announced a new package of $90 million in emergency assistance programs for small businesses around Illinois. And these are the first of what I would say are many, many waves of what we want to do for businesses. The reason we chose the businesses here is we wanted to focus on those, one, those that are hardest hit 
uh, to the smallest businesses that may have the least sort of cash on hand, and then also ensure that we're hitting the downstate areas, um, given that Chicago, the city of Chicago is launching their effort. Um, but as I mentioned, this will be the first. So there's a, a resource link there that you can see uh, to make sure that you get the download of what's available. And we'll be dis distributing this uh, presentation afterwards. In particular, the governor and I heard that uh, some of the biggest challenges are being faced by restaurants, bars, and hotels. Um, there are challenges around making payroll. There are challenges around um, making sure that people are able to pay their rent and other bills. And so these are a small bridge to help businesses stay afloat for some time while we await more direction on the federal stimulus program. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Hospitality Emergency Grant Fund first, if we can flip to that one. Great. So as I mentioned, uh, the Hospitality Emergency Grant Program is a $14 million grant program aiming to help small hospitality businesses make ends meet, providing up to $25,000 to eligible bars and restaurants and up to $50,000 for eligible hotels. For newer businesses without a full year of revenue, we're taking bank statements as a partial year demonstration. These grants are available to support working capital, like payroll and rent, job training and technology to support shifts in operations, like increased pickup and delivery. Bars and restaurants that generated between 500,000 and 1 million are eligible for up to 25,000, and those under 500,000 are eligible up for 10,000. And then hotels that generated less than 8 million are eligible for up to 50,000. What we're doing here is this program repurposes job trading and our tourism promotion funds to provide emergency grant assistance. And again, we know this is a small amount. This is certainly not going to cover, you know, many months of bills, but we hope that's a step in the right direction and we can supplement other programs and funds that are out there. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions about how to apply. So applications are actually available today by going to our DCEO website. Uh, we'll share those URLs at the end. And there's some one on the screen right now. Um, and those applications are due by April 1st at 5 p.m. And all the valid applications received within a five-day window will be entered into a lottery and grant winners will be notified on April 4th. The, the lottery is happening because of the high volume we anticipate. Um, so that's kind of the rationale there. And by the way, there's no benefit to submitting an application first, as long as the valid, the application itself is valid and complete and received by the deadline. So whether you want to submit it today or in a few days, it doesn't put you in a different order because the lottery will be done at the end. And so then how soon will businesses receive funds? We've also heard this question quite a bit. We're striving to make the funds available to awarded businesses within two days of receiving the necessary bank information from an awarded grantee. So if you or anyone you know is thinking of applying, um, getting all of your fiscal stuff ready to go, making sure that it's uh, you know, easily understandable and we can get in touch with your bank to validate, um, then we can move as quickly as possible once that award is handed out. We can go to the next slide to talk about the Small Business Emergency Loan Fund. So this is uh, another fund that we've been working on for businesses outside of the city of Chicago to complement the Chicago's, uh, the city of Chicago's Emergency Loan Fund for Small Businesses. And it's $60 million to support low interest loans of up to $50,000 for chain businesses, liquor stores, payday lenders, uh, those are excluded, but for everyone else, um, those are included. And the businesses with fewer than, fewer, fewer than 50 employees and less than $3 million in revenue will be eligible to apply. You can see here um, that successful applicants will not owe anything for six months. And we're putting up an expression of interest form this afternoon 
in case people are interested in submitting that to share uh, their interest in applying. Finally, um, eligible businesses will be invited to submit a full application on April 1st, and we'll strive to make a loan decision by 10 days from that to make funds available two days after we get the bank information. So once again, if you're thinking of applying, it makes a lot of sense to get your fiscal stuff in order, submit that statement of interest, we'll make sure that you get all the information you need to know how to apply, um, and we're happy to kind of field questions between now and then on how that might work. All these materials will also be on our website. Then finally, I want to talk about the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loans. Next page. So this is a program managed by the US uh, Small Business Administration. Our team uh, actually worked to source over 7,000 responses statewide within about 72 hours of this economic injury disaster loan being available. And what we received from businesses was a survey, and thank you to those of you who have participated about what they've experienced since uh, February 1st, which is the designated time, uh, whether it's missed revenue, challenges making payroll, or other economic injury that may have happened as a result of the coronavirus. And so we were able to secure our statewide economic injury declaration very quickly. So all businesses in all 102 counties are eligible to apply and may be eligible to receive low interest economic injury disaster loans up to $2 million per business. Now, I'm also aware that the Small Business Administration's website has been completely inundated and there are challenges uh, with actually getting, getting applications submitted. So if you do have any challenges, if the website's not working for you, they've created a workaround to submit a PDF into a box link. We can make sure that gets that, that those directions get to this group. You can see a little bit about the interest rates for for-profit and for nonprofit, and the terms are up to 30 years. So we're continuing to work with the SBA. I have a regular sort of standing call with our regional administrator, administrator who was on the phone, uh, Bo Steiner, uh, with, with Dick Durbin when you all had him, had hosted him. Uh, we talk very often, they're waiting to get more direction on the stimulus and what that means for you, but DCO will continue to work closely with them as this program grows, as other small business grants are made available from the feds um, and any other uh, regulatory or um, other programs that might be available. Finally, um, for businesses owned by minorities, women, veterans, persons with disabilities, our Office of Minority Economic Empowerment is also um, available to assist you and provide you with information if there are additional benefits that, that those businesses might consider applying for. But in general, all of our information is, is at this link, as well as um, support at illinois.gov. And we'll again provide all these links and all these emails so you don't have to memorize them or write them down. Um, that way you can contact us directly. Let's move on to slide six. Unemployment insurance. We've gotten a lot of questions from concerned employers uh, wondering, uh, wondering about, will my employees qualify? What happens if they get furloughed? What happens if I reduce their pay for a temporary amount of time? What happens if they get um, sick with the, with the illness? So uh, that, Unemployment insurance is handled by one of our sister agencies, IDES, and they are actively working on um, making sure they're responsive to, to the crisis. Um, but I'll just give a quick overview uh, from them that was shared. So individuals without access to sick leave or unable to work due to COVID-19 can employ for unemployment insurance. The governor's executive order also waives the seven-day waiting period for residents to apply for unemployment benefits. 
meaning anyone who qualifies can file and become immediately eligible instead of experiencing the, the week-long lag during this challenging time. Also, the governor's working with the federal delegation and congressional le leadership to push the Trump administration to allow the state to increase the length of benefits beyond the 26 weeks, as that's a continued question that we've been receiving. And we're looking at, you know, any other ideas on unemployment insurance, given the unique circumstances that we're in and given the huge spike we've seen, and I'm sure you've all read about um, in unemployment as the economy kind of grinds to a, a temporary standstill. Let's go to slide seven, please. Finally, I want to hit on um, a big picture point, but then I'll talk specifically about this response fund. We are doing everything we can to help support businesses, whether that's advocating for businesses at the federal level, whether that's making sure federal dollars get to Illinois, or whether that's rolling out state programs, more of which I think you'll be seeing from us in the coming days and weeks. But we've also received a ton of inbound of people that want to help. And I want to say thank you to those of you who've reached out to us to offer your help and support, whether that's through um, you know, donations of financial contributions, whether that's through donating your manufacturing capacity, whether that's actual goods that you're donating. It's been an incredibly humbling and, um, and valuable you know, thing that you're willing to share. And we really appreciate um, the outpouring of help that's come to us. I'll just talk a little bit about the governor's initiative that he unveiled with his sister, Penny Pritzker, the former US Secretary of Commerce. So Governor Pritzker is partnering with United Way of Illinois and the Alliance of Illinois Community Foundations to launch the Illinois COVID-19 Response Fund. And it is specifically created to support nonprofits who are serving those who've been disproportionately impacted. This organization will be collecting financial donations for emergency food and basic supplies, access to primary health care, access to housing and shelter for people who may be challenged in those areas, among other uh, basic needs for families, for children, and for workers. And so what's incredible is we've already seen a huge commitment from companies, I actually just learned of another one this morning, that have donated over $23 million in the past few days. And if you're interested in uh, contributing either as an individual or as a business, more information can be found at the link below. The other, um, the other thing that we don't have a slide about in here is if you're interested in contributing in any other way, whether that's um, through donating physical goods, whether that's offering a technology platform that you have, whether that's, um, you know, donating part of your workforce or manufacturing capacity, we're taking that too. So I will make sure that you have a contact at our department that you can reach out directly to, and I'll send that along um, through, through Jack and his team, uh, because we are in taking any and all help. We're also in taking I know that some businesses aren't able to donate and, and they need to be able to still sell because of the current situation they're in. And so if you're interested in, in you know, selling any goods that you have, especially related to healthcare and medical equipment and protective uh, equipment for frontline workers, I, there's a channel for that too. So whatever way that your business wants to help can help. We'd love to hear about it. We're tracking that and we will connect you with the right person to coordinate that donation. Um, we can go to the next slide. So finally, uh, some links here. I would encourage you all to follow us for up to the minute information at any of our social channels. We're constantly posting and uh, updating our resources. I also want to just take a moment to pause and acknowledge some of the topics that were not covered here today. Um, so one being uh, regulatory challenges that that businesses are facing, 
Um, I would really love to hear those from you and perhaps, um, you know, Jack and his team can collect feedback on what would help you um, reduce, you know, any friction that you may have from a regulatory perspective that the state or the federal government can help you to, to weather this storm. Um, I know we didn't touch a lot on unemployment and some of the challenges there. Um, so I can definitely work with, with Jack and, and his team to have a, a, a colleague of mine, a peer of mine, come and speak on that. And then I would also just say for, for any questions that we don't get to today, I'll work with um, the chamber to get a list of those and commit that we'll get some of those answers in writing to this group um, and on our website. So with that, I will uh, kind of turn it over to the Q&A that I know that um, Jack is gonna, going to facilitate. Great, thank you, Erin. Uh, that was great, a lot of good information. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, we have a lot of questions, so I'll jump right into it and we'll work through it. Um, one of the questions is kind of, what is the definition of a hospitality business? Um, and, uh, you know, what would be, what would fit under that category? And then you have another category on small businesses. So maybe just touch on that a bit. Yeah, so I can get, I'll follow up with a very specific definitions for each of those. For hospitality, hotel, bars, restaurants qualify. Um, there are some sort of exceptions there and, and broader uh, statements. So we'll make sure we get a complete list to people. Um, there was a question about multi-property, multi-family property owners. So these, I guess, would be real estate owners. People have properties and clearly rent and some of that may, may be delayed. And they were wondering if those loans uh, um, would uh, apply here. Um, the SBA loans or the DCEO loans? Um, I guess either one. Um, let me get back to you on that. Uh, it it kind of depends on exactly the type of relief that's being looked, looked at, but I will definitely make sure we get an answer to that one. Great. Um, there was uh, some questions about uh, sole proprietors and not for profits and where do they fit in? I know you talked about the COVID-19 response fund, but as far as um, they would, would they be able to apply for loans and, and that kind of thing? Uh, yes, so we'll send, what we'll do is we'll send the criteria of who is eligible. So the SBA um, has a different criteria than the DCEO loans at this point. Um, and it's not, the SBA's criteria are not um, necessarily straightforward like a, a an employee limit threshold or a revenue threshold it's a combination of different things so we'll make sure to get that out to folks um, as well as our criteria uh, at a very granular level okay um gig economy workers and and uber and lyft drivers and those types of workers um how do they fit into the unemployment insurance? Is that something you know, or that would be something to get back on us to back to us on also? The federal stimulus bill does include uh, unemployment benefits for gig economy workers, which is a new benefit. And so we are actively working with our partners in federal government to understand exactly how those could be distributed as well as for um, as well as the IDES, our, our sister agency. I would also say more generally for workers, um, we're aware that there are some industries that are actively ramping up uh, their need for employees, while others may be kind of ramping down. So simple example, um, grocery stores are going to need more people in warehouses to stock, and restock items. Um, we're going to need more companies to deliver goods. Uh, and among other things. So uh, we are at DCEO working with the governor's office on a way to get 
uh, an active sort of matching site up so that people who may be underemployed, unemployed, who are looking to help uh, or get back employed uh, with companies that are hiring can match make in that area. So um, that's something we're actively looking at. But yes, for gig economy specifically, it will be part of the federal stimulus bill, which we're awaiting more guidance on. Um, a couple que questions have come up um, and I'll, I'll maybe combine them. There are some people that are currently uh, in line to get grants from DCEO, not related to this, but just get grants. How is your staff doing uh, on those items and how will that uh, uh, process work? For FY20? Yes. Yes, um, if you have an outstanding grant with DCEO uh, and you have a question about it, um, you can still go through the normal channels. We'll still process the request. Uh, we, if you're interested in using your grant for anything related to the COVID-19 crisis, please let us know. And um, we're happy to work with you to adjust the grant agreement terms. I know that a lot of grant recipients have been interested in uh, kind of amending their, their grant agreement terms in order to address what's going on. So for example, um, if you had a job training grant uh, that was sort of a generic job training grant, but you want to use it to reskill workers uh, related to the healthcare services, you know, please let us know. We can work with you to, to repurpose those dollars. Uh, we're also looking at, um, we realize that some organizations may need uh, more advance on their, on their grant dollars, given some of the circumstances and on a case by case basis, we're evaluating if uh, we can do that. So again, if you need um, something on your grant, the normal channels, we're still processing grant requests, uh, we're still processing uh, grant exceptions and amendments. Um, so the normal channels would be the correct one. I'll make sure we get a contact for that. There, there's a lot of uh, stuff in here for small businesses. Do you do you plan on doing something for middle market or larger companies uh, in the future? I think the biggest focus we have for larger companies, um, well, one, we're looking at any other funds we can use to help larger companies. As you can imagine, because uh, the state and the federal government are set up very differently, some of our tools are going to be differently accessible. So as far as giving out grants or, or cash or loans, um, we're looking at that, looking at any and all ways we can explore. We're also looking at, um, as I mentioned, federal, sorry, regulatory or statutory changes that could help those companies. And so I would ask uh, this group, if you have challenges, um, that are slowing you down in the ability to uh, make payments if you need things waived or extended. Um, please, please do work with the chamber to collect those because we are taking that feedback in uh, to adjust. So I'll give an example. I know there's a requirement for warn notices, which is a notice that um, alerts our department and as well as IDES about layoffs. And that notice currently, as it's written in statute, requires a 60-day notice. Well, in the current times we're in, that's almost impossible. Um, and so we're working to kind of adjust that timeline so that companies don't have to worry about getting fined or, or anything like that if they're not able to meet that 60-day requirement. And that's something we're actively working on. And those type of details um, are really helpful for us. You're running your businesses and you know what's causing friction. So continue to please send them to Jack and, and we'll make sure to take them into consideration. Great, and, and we've had some questions about self-employed people and sole proprietors. Uh, just uh, those people are uh, eligible for these small business loans. Is that, that's correct, right? Uh, yes, as far as I'm aware, I mean, we'll, I'd be happy to take those questions on a case-by-case -case basis, but um, it depends on how they're incorporated and things like that. So we'd be happy to look at that and send more direction to you. Um, we've had a number of questions on unemployment insurance. So 
we will get to those questions and we'll follow up. I, one question that has come up is, does it, will this affect your rate? And my understanding is that it will not affect your rate if it's related to this uh, um, pandemic. So I don't know if you could confirm that, Aaron, but that's my understanding of the governor's executive order and the second relief package that came through Congress last week. When it comes to unemployment insurance? Correct. Yeah, we can follow up with more details. Exactly, as I mentioned, we don't manage unemployment insurance, but I'll make sure to get an answer for you, both on the state level and the federal level. Right. And um, can you comment on um, what other resources may be coming down the line? This is immediate help for people. Will there be other resources coming down the line later, like uh, job training, um, other types of uh, tax credits and other forms of assistance in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, two weeks ago, the governor tasked myself and several other budget and economy directors and secretaries to work together on a list of ideas that we'd heard from stakeholders from our own policy research and from other states about what we could do to provide more relief. Um, we've sent that proposal to them um, and that includes, you know, anything we could do, as I mentioned, regulatory, statutory, um, other sources of funding, other federal funds. Um, so we're looking at all those things. Um, that list has been proposed and, and, they've, and all of our uh, cabinet members have, you know, signed off on several ideas. Um, so it's a matter of um, kind of what's next and, and how we'll work with what's come through the federal stimulus bill to make sure we get that out the door. Uh, we had one question, can you apply for the loan and partly you don't know what's gonna come down the line so you may not need the money right now, but if this thing goes on for a, a longer period of time, you would need the money. So can you apply um, even if you're not sure you need the money right now? Yes, you can apply. Yes, you can. Um, you know, if you don't need the money right now, we'll definitely address that on a case by case basis. But um, we are accepting applications from anyone. And uh, construction companies and maintenance companies, um, do they qualify? For small business grants and loans? Yes, yes. Uh, if they meet the criteria that are laid out either by DCO or by the SBA, which I'll get you the SBA one uh, to, as follow up. And uh, I guess startup companies would fall under the same category. I, I, as yes. long as their companies and operating, they would, they would uh, uh, qualify. That's correct. Uh, does, does Airbnb apl apply as a hospitality? I, I presume they mean people that uh, are providing uh, the Airbnb places to stay. Uh, yeah, I understand the question. Uh, that's a good question. Let me go back and check with our, our legal team on that one. Um, there, was, there was some questions about essential businesses and employees. Um, yes. Is that, is that changing as it goes along or is that consistent with what the governor originally had in the executive order and how can companies uh, find out about that? Uh, great question. And we have gotten a lot of questions on this topic. So uh, the way that the process works now is you can go to the DCEO website. There's an essential businesses FAQ on the front page of our, of our website. I would recommend clicking there. Um, it should answer a lot of your questions. Now we've heard from companies that are on the margins or in a gray area or a supplier of some of these industries that maybe weren't you know, quite uh, identified in or out. And so we're also accepting questions um, either to our support email address, our hotline, um, and we can answer for you if you are an essential business. And so, we, as I mentioned, there have been some that were deemed uh, 
essential, but maybe weren't explicitly stated. So I'll give you an example. Car dealerships, I think, were allowed to say open by appointment only, but not have showrooms open due to the social distancing law. So there are some cases where um, a legal team is actually reviewing the circumstances, um, making sure they understand how the business works, and then providing guidance to companies. So that's kind of piece number one. The second piece is we're also fielding quite a few complaints and concerns from concerned employees, um, uh, from community members about non, what they believe are non-essential businesses staying open. Our legal team is also working with the governor's legal team to make sure we're giving direction uh, to companies that are appearing to violate uh, the order. And so um, that same channel that I just mentioned is the way to get in touch with us if you believe um, someone is violating that issue. And we are, are enforcing and following up on those complaints. Great. And you, you mentioned uh, that the application press is going to open April 1st. Um, and you may have said this, but a question came up. How, what's the timeline from when the applicant clicks submit to awards coming out? And is it based, is it first come, first serve? Um, are there other, is it based on eligibility or other components being considered? How does that work? Yeah, actually, let me go back really quick to the essential businesses. I forgot one point that I wanted to make, which is um, please use common sense. If you have the ability to operate, if you are an essential business and you have the ability to operate some of your staff at home or remotely, we would really, really encourage you to do so. Um, you know, if you are a uh, human services or charitable service and you have the ability to give people laptops and they can work in their home office, we would highly, highly encourage that. Um, and would hope that um, even if you're an essential business, you have your, uh, your folks working at home. So just wanted to point that out. Let me get back to your question about the, the application. Um, I'm sorry, my computer now froze, but I can still answer it. So uh, we're stopping applications. It is not a first come first serve. For all applications, we will accept them for um, the window of time. And once the window closes, whether we got the, the very first application or the very last application, they'll all be entered into a lottery. And that lottery will determine, um, it'll take the eligible winners and determine who wins. And the reason for the lottery is because we're already seeing a demand higher than the amount of grants we can give out, which I realize is not ideal, but um, that's as much as we are able to provide right now until we get another round of funding out the door. Great. There, there, I think this is a follow-up. It says, uh, where, please say exactly where the page is on DCO's website to submit a request to have our industry named as an essential industry. Is there a specific place to go on that um, on the website? Uh, to submit it on the website, I don't think there is a submission form on the website, but you can email support at illinois.gov and we will get back to you. What resources are available for um, uh, displaced workers and, and will, you, will you have more to say on that and how can people find out about that? Maybe that's for their companies, for their employees that maybe are being displaced or for people to find out in general? Yep, so um, Illinois WorkNet is our, is, uh, our federally funded uh, WIOA dollars, which is the Workforce Innovation Act. And it allows individuals to, who are unemployed or businesses who are seeking to hire to, to post jobs and to find jobs as well as um, providing counseling, skill, skill gaining or upskilling, um, as well as, um, you know, post resumes and get feedback. So we can make sure to send that out to folks. I would also say, um, I would encourage you to, 
uh, work with your local red team member. Um, if you would like, we can send out their contact information. We're, we're happy to help your business navigate. We've heard businesses say, you know, I have to lay off all these staff, but they have this skill. Is anyone hiring? And we're help, happy to help play a matchmaking role in trying to find uh, and trying to point you to companies who are actively hiring because there are many of those. Um, we're also posting as much as we can information about companies that are hiring up really rapidly. So as you can imagine, a lot of the delivery services, a lot of the healthcare services, and we're trying to actively get that out. And so um, Jack, you know, I'd be happy to make sure you're looped in on those newsletters and on those social posts, but um, we'll get you that information so that you can, you can connect your workers to those resources as well. Great. Um, and another question that came up here and I've actually heard it uh, even before today's webinar. So some companies are going to be applying to your fund, to the city fund, to the SBA. Um, how, how are, how is that being tracked? Um, applying to multiple funds, will that affect your credit rating? Um, are you reporting to credit agencies if, if they're applying to your fund? Um, but then if people are applying to multiple different avenues, uh, how are, how are you tracking that or how is that impacting the loan process? Yeah, great question. So you are, there's nothing stopping you from applying to multiple funds, grants, loans, or anything else. Um, we're aware that not everyone is going to be eligible for everything. We're also aware that due to the lottery system and, and the different criteria, not everyone's going to qualify for everything, even if they are eligible. So uh, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. As far as the impact on your credit rating, um, I can get more information on exactly how that's being used. So I give the right direction there. Um, for some of the restaurants and in, in, in that hospitality business, particularly for restaurants, sometimes each location is a different business, although there may be similar owners, but they may set it up so each one is separate, a separate company. Um, can each one of those apply? And in, 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 when you have employee uh, criteria, number of employees and all that, how does that impact that? It depends on the business structure. Um, so we would have to look at that on a case by case basis, but if they are different owners, for example, um, a franchise or something like that, it probably, it would probably be eligible, but we would have to look at exactly the, the structure. And if a lot of the employees, or I should say, some are W2 and some are 1099s, how is that being, uh, looked at as far as uh, um, criteria for, for that, for number of employees or anything like that? Good question. Let me get that detail. Great. Um, uh, there's a question and, and I'm, I'm assuming all businesses, so there's like a small private healthcare practice is that considered a small business? And would that uh, work? Uh, would they apply just as a small business and would they be uh, eligible? And yeah, anything that fits the criteria of the loans and grants for DCEO does count and same thing with the SBA. Right, okay. And um, we're, we're down to just the last couple minutes here. One thing I, I just wanted maybe you to, to reiterate again, Erin, if people want to give goods, uh, financial contributions, if they think they have manufacturing capacity to help with PPE or anything else. We had a company um, that uh, is a distillery. They make liquor, but they're shifting some of their practice to hand sanitizer and are going to uh, make it available for first responders and donate. Just say again how people can uh, access uh, information to be able to donate goods, PPE, uh, or, or financially. Yes, and thank you so, so much uh, for all of your willingness to contribute, whether it's uh, you know, cash or, or, or otherwise. Um, 
if you, the easiest way, let me just give one single email so people can send it to us and we'll get you an answer. It's business.donations at illinois.gov. Uh, we can answer all of your questions there, but um, we're taking financial donations, we're taking PPE, we're taking capacity donations for manufacturers, and we're taking anything that doesn't fit in that category, you know, trucks, other goods, food, things like that. So I would just start in that central business.donations at illinois.gov, and we can direct you and, and match you to the right person because, um, you know, IEMA, our, our emergency management agency, is coordinating some of those. We're coordinating others. Um, you may have seen that IMA and iBio are also coordinating. So um, we would be happy to direct you to the right place so that you don't have to navigate all of those different places. And, and one more time on all the, the, the few different areas that there's loan funds, uh, uh, hospitality, small business, there's a couple different categories. Um, are all of those going to be determined by lottery or uh, once people apply or is it just uh, one category? It is for the hospitality loans. Uh, sorry, the hospitality grants will be a lottery. Oh, okay. and, the, and then the uh, downstate will be, the, anything that's a grant is going to be a lottery. Okay. Anything that is a loan will be not a lottery. Okay, great, great. Um, I, I will say there's been a, there's been a few questions about the CARES Act. Um, I think that's probably uh, going to be for another uh, uh, webinar to to go through that. There was one about uh, uh, VC firms and private equity firms. Um, my understanding is it's, it's still on, on the SBA loans, it's still going to be related to the criteria that SBA has, and that's size of business, 500 or fewer employees, and then different industries may have slightly different uh, criteria, um, but we'll have more information on that later. But as of right now, my understanding is still it's the criteria that SBA has for a small business which is generally 500 employees or less, you would qualify for the loans that they have, whether you're a venture capital, private equity firm, uh, or, or a, a, a small business uh, doing retail on Main Street. So um, I don't know if you, you would uh, confirm that, Aaron, but I think that's my understanding of it. There are some exceptions um, that may apply but in general yes that is that is the direction okay great so uh we've run out of time uh thank you director guthrie uh for all your efforts for spending some time with the business community this afternoon i also just want to compliment uh aaron and actually the whole governor's team they have been very accessible Aaron has been accessible any questions, any time of day on the weekends, 24 seven, as well as the, the governor's staff. Uh, so we have an open line of communication. We're regularly talking. Um, any questions that weren't answered here today, we're going to follow up on those questions and try to get you answers, maybe group them together um, and put out some kind of FAQ um, on our website um, and on DCO's website. We'll work with the chamber staff and the DCO team to make sure as many questions as those we can answer because we could not get to all of them here today. Um, so just on a, on a personal level, Aaron, I want to thank you. I want to thank your whole team um, for your support. I want to thank you for the support that you give the chamber through our Small Business Development Center and our workforce training activities. Uh, both will be especially critical to our employers in the coming months. Um, I do wanna add, we, we have a training partner, Illinois Biz, um, and we are doing weekly webinars on different job training, um, you know, working in a, a stress environment, working remotely, different types of topics. Uh, we're doing those uh, weekly. Uh, I think generally it'll be on Wednesdays. Um, we couldn't do that without the support of DCEO uh, working with 
the chamber, the Chicagoland Chamber, and our training partner, Illinois Biz. Um, on all of this information, I think you see up on the screen uh, different websites, um, DCO's website, but also others. Um, for all information and all links, uh, you can go to COVID for the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you can visit our website at chicagolandchamber.org. The chamber will continue to bring updates uh, like this one in the coming weeks. Watch the event page on our website uh, and for emails for more details. Um, we want to hear from you, as I mentioned before, please feel free to email me at jlavin at chicagolandchamber.org if you have issues, policy issues, questions, and we will get as many of those answered as we can. Once again, thank you, Director Guthrie, for being with us this afternoon. We greatly appreciate it. Um, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, um, and thank you again for joining us. Yes, thank you so much, Jack, for having us. Um, my staff did take notes and, and I know Jack's did as well on your questions. I know there's some very specific questions we need to follow up on with you, as well as some, some higher level strategy questions that you have about next steps. So we will work through the weekend to get those answered because I know that we're all under tight timelines to meet um, our, our you know, payment requirements that we have, uh, as well as other obligations to our employees and to, um, you know, loans that we may have. So we're going to work really quickly to get you those answers so that um, you can make decisions about what might be the right programs for you. Great. Thank you, uh, Aaron, and thank you for all you're doing. Uh, you guys are doing an extraordinary job in difficult times. Thank you, everyone, for being on this afternoon. Please stay safe, stay healthy, um, and uh, look for our on our website, chicagolandchamber.org. Uh, for further details and further webinars and answers to your questions. Thank you again.